guys, hello guys, in this video we're going to be talking about who could see the most snowfall this winter comparatively to normal and also who could actually see the most in amounts as well. We'll go over that at the end of the video, but before I get started with this one, I would ask that you do subscribe if you do like weather related content and also make sure to check out the links in the description for our social medias. Also share this video with friends on Facebook and other social medias, friends and family that is, if you think they will find this video informative. Now, we're getting things started now, as you can see this is a winter forecast, I showed my little banner here for our winter forecast this is a type of winter forecast this isn't exactly a winter forecast but we are reviewing some of our other stuff that we've called for in the past first things first we're going to go over our our precipitation forecast temperature forecast and then snowfall forecast because precipitation and temperature also has a lot to do with it obviously because we need colder than normal temperatures and above average precipitation to get you above average snowfall you need those two components typically so now, we're looking at our precipitation forecast. First off, we have slightly below average precipitation there for California, Oregon, Nevada, Arizona, areas like that. Let's go ahead and add a layer here, and you can see there's an even darker brown layer there with more below average precipitation there for California. This is going to be mostly due to the fact that we won't have exactly an El Nino influence, or at least not a typical El Nino. So this is going to lead to what I think will be below average precipitation, but we might make out with average, but as of right now, I am thinking that we will have below average precipitation. That tends to be one of the trickiest things to forecast is if we'll have a lot of precipitation out there or not. So right now I'm going with below average. We'll see what happens though. Now for your above average, you can see there is a slightly above average precipitation area that extends from Montana down through into the mid-Atlantic, Great Lakes, and New England regions of the United States. Now as we're getting to this, I do want to mention that this covers the months of December, January, and February, which is the meteorological winter months. The meteorological months or seasons start on December 1st and it lasts until the end of February. We don't go based off the calendar seasons with meteorology. We go from, again, for winter example, we go from December till the end of February. So we are having a lot of snow there for the Rockies, the Northwest, and then also into regions like Montana, the Dakotas, and Nebraska, but that's happening in October. So this isn't necessarily a forecast for what's already happening. Now let's add another layer here. You can see we have an even darker green region from Chicago down into the mid-Atlantic and then up into the Northeast. This is going to be because of our storm tracks that we're going to have, which we're also going to go over in this video. So stay tuned for that as well. Uh, now let's see our, this is going to be our temperature forecast. And you can see we do have a slightly below average temperature region that extends from just east of the Rockies there all the way to the Northeast and extends pretty far south there in a lot of the central and eastern states, as you can see. Let's add another layer though. And you can see we have an even darker blue shade. The medium blue shade here extends from the North Central United States into the Great Lakes and then also into the Northeastern United States. And our third blue shade, which means that we're pretty confident that this area will see below average temperatures this winter from Minnesota, North Dakota, all the way east over the entire Great Lakes, and then into the interior New England regions of the United States. This is going to be our coldest region, most likely comparatively to normal of the entire United States this winter. Now, we do have a warmer than normal region here, a slightly warmer than normal region, that is, from the Pacific Northwest down through into the Southwest and then into Texas as well. We do have an even more orange shade there for California and a lot of those, again, Southwest regions of the United States there. That's where it's going to be a little bit warmer than just that normal orange shade. Let's take a look at some of our storm tracks here. These are out of order. I accidentally put them out of order, but I showed these in, I think, my third winter forecast, so I'm bringing these back up. This is some of the more common storm tracks I'm expecting this winter. This one actually is very familiar probably because we saw a lot of this last winter actually where a lot of these interior regions saw more snowfall, especially in upstate New York and then Vermont and Maine rather than the coast. So this is going to be a pretty common storm track this winter. This will bring more rain to the coast than anything and mostly snow again in the Appalachian Mountains and areas like that, like upstate New York, areas in interior uh, Pennsylvania, and then also areas like West Virginia. Let's take a look at another one. Here's your Alberta Clipper storm track, and this one's also a pretty common one. Keep in mind, it's not always going to perfectly follow this pink line, but that's kind of going to be the average. But sometimes it can come in further south and head out to sea 
kind of out near Delaware and the Delmarva, somewhere near there. And sometimes it can go far inland and track over upstate New York and then kind of curve back up into Canada. It all depends where the jet stream is when it happens. But this can bring moderate snowfall just north of wherever the storm tracks. And this can lead to, you know, around six inches of snow, I would say, in some in some of these Alberta clippers. Mostly light snow slash snow showers, though, for most of these blue regions that surround the low pressure system. But this is usually a pretty cold storm system, so we don't see a lot of rain with these. That's the good news. It's usually all snow with these snowstorms. Here's your Miller B nor'easter storm track. You've heard of a nor'easter, but I don't think a lot of you have probably heard of a Miller B nor'easter. And what these are is they basically just start as Alberta clippers and then they head into the ocean and basically either merge with a normal nor'easter or they just become a nor'easter and then track up the coast. And usually these affect mostly New England and bring heavier snowfall for those regions. And we saw a lot of those in 2014 to 2015, if you remember that winter. Uh, Boston had a historic winter that year, and we saw a lot of these, and that's what really led to most of that snowfall there. But mostly rainy and icy conditions near where the storm tracks, out near the coast, and then south of it, mostly rain. Here's your Miller A nor'easter storm track, and this is going to be the big one. These usually lead to the biggest snowstorms out east, and we see very, very heavy snowfall interior regions of the Appalachian Mountains. Again, these can track even further east and bring snowfall, heavier snowfall. I've, you know, I live in coastal Virginia. We've had Miller A nor'easters that bring where we get the bullseye of the snow. So it can extend very far east or very far west with these. So take it with a grain of salt. Don't pay too much attention to the placement, but pay more attention to the fact that we will have very heavy snowfall in some regions when we do see these storms track up the coast. And these can lead to a lot of east coast blizzards, actually. So a lot of your big blizzards in the eastern United States come from nor'easter snowstorms. Now, here's your snowfall forecast comparatively to normal. This is probably what you all clicked on this video to see. These regions here on in the light blue are going to see a slightly above average amount of snowfall here comparatively to normal. Also, I'm going to add another layer here. In this medium blue, we're going to see a moderate amount of above average snowfall. So Great Lakes regions, New England, Mid-Atlantic. I'm expecting lake effect snow this winter. Also, you've seen my storm tracks. I'm expecting heavier snow snow storms, particularly for the interior northeastern United States, but there is some that bring moderate snowfall there for a lot of the Great Lakes regions. So that's why we see the most snowfall here, according to my forecast. And then, again, that interior New England and northeastern region, they're going to see the most above average snowfall, I believe, uh, probably far above average snowfall for these regions. Now, for your below average snowfall, I only have a slightly below average snowfall region there for California, uh, and, and it's pretty low confidence. That's why I'm choosing to use just my slightly below average snowfall region because I'm not quite sure. Again, this is one of the hardest things to forecast during winter is if we'll have a lot of precipitation for California or pretty much none. So that's going to be a big determining factor, and we can't really you know, predict it that far out. It's really hard to predict that compared to other things. Now, you're probably wondering, well, that answers how much snowfall comparatively to normal I'll get, but it doesn't really answer my questions as far as exactly how much snowfall I'll get. So at the end of this video, I did want to show you what your average amount of snowfall is and who gets the most snowfall on average. So we're looking at a map here from NOAA, and this is your average annual snowfall. Now, this one I don't think is just for December, January, February. I think this one extends all the way from like September until May. So when snow does fall, this is your average. And you can see in a lot of those turquoise colors, we only get, you know, 6 to 12 to maybe 24 to 30 inches. So a lot of the mid-Atlantic regions, central United States, get only about that much snowfall. I know that's a lot for some people. Uh, but in the blue... In some of those darker blue regions, that's where we get 30 to maybe 48 inches of snow annually on average. And once it starts to get purple, that's when we're looking at 48 to 84 inches of snow. And in the pink colors, 84 to 96 inches of snow. And then in a lot of those reds, that's where we get 96 to 150 inches annually plus. So you can see some of those mountains that border Montana, Wyoming and Idaho right there in the corner of all three of those states, we do receive 150 inches plus. Some of the southern Rockies down there in Colorado and Utah as well also see 150 inches plus as well as some of those mountains in California. And then some of the Great Lake regions there in Michigan as well see some of the darker reds as well as 
regions in upstate New York that see a tremendous amount of lake effect snowfall. We see tons of snowfall for that region, but usually it varies year to year. But on average, you do see 150 inches plus for a lot of those lake effect regions that we do see lake effect snow. Anyway, guys, I hope you really, really enjoyed this video. If you want any more videos like this, leave suggestions down below. I'd be happy to make any sorts of videos you guys would like to see. Uh, for you guys, you know, it's kind of a slow time of year, so I am willing to make a lot of videos that are kind of long range like this and just letting you guys know what your averages are and everything and what I think it'll shape up to be comparatively to normal. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you guys in the next one. Again, share this with your friends and families on social media. I'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you so much for watching.